Hey everyone! Today I'm diving into something that affects us all, yet often goes unnoticed how trauma seeds problems in our lives. Let's face it, the world feels like it's spinning out of control with issues like inflation, unemployment and even misinformation. Politicians are scrambling to offer solutions but they're mostly treating the symptoms, not the root cause. So, what's really going on? Imagine trauma as an enemy planting seeds inside us. When we go through something traumatic, it's like a seed is planted in our minds and hearts. Over time, if left unchecked, these seeds grow into bigger problems like anxiety, distrust, and even aggression. Think about it. When you're struggling with financial insecurity or job loss, it's not just about the money. It's about the stress and fear that come with it, which can trigger past traumas and make everything feel 10 times worse. This isn't just psychological mumbo jumbo. Studies show that trauma changes our brain chemistry and affects our decision making. It can make us more reactive, less empathetic, and more likely to see the world as a dangerous place. Now, let's connect the dots. When entire communities face trauma, like during a war or a pandemic, the collective stress can lead to widespread issues like violence, corruption, and misinformation. It's a vicious cycle. But here's the good news. Understanding this can be the first step toward real change. By addressing trauma, not just its symptoms, we can start to heal on a deeper level. This means better mental health support, more compassionate communities and policies that actually tackle the root of our problems. So next time you hear about the latest crisis or political debate, remember, the enemy plants seeds inside of us through trauma. By recognizing and addressing these hidden seeds, we can grow stronger, healthier and more resilient together. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with someone who needs to hear this. Stay curious and take care. Trauma is a complex and multifaceted issue that can affect anyone, regardless of age, gender, or background. It can stem from various sources such as childhood experiences, accidents, natural disasters, or even witnessing violence. The impact of trauma can be long-lasting, influencing our thoughts, emotions, and behaviors in ways we might not even realize. For instance, a child who grows up in a turbulent household may carry those emotional scars into adulthood, affecting their relationships and self-esteem. Similarly, someone who has experienced a severe accident might develop a fear of certain activities or places, limiting their ability to live life fully. But it's important to remember that healing is possible. Practices like mindfulness therapy and community support can help us process and overcome these traumatic experiences. By acknowledging and addressing our trauma, we can break free from its grip and lead more fulfilling lives. Building strong, supportive communities is crucial in this healing process. When we come together to support one another, we create an environment where everyone feels safe and valued. This collective effort can help us address the root causes of our problems and foster a more compassionate and understanding society. So, let's take the time to understand the impact of trauma on ourselves and those around us. By doing so, we can create a world where everyone has the opportunity to heal, grow, and thrive. Remember, the seeds of trauma may be planted within us, but with the right care and attention, we can nurture them into something positive and transformative. Together, we can build a brighter future for ourselves and future generations. Thank you for being a part of this journey towards healing and understanding. Stay curious, stay compassionate, and take care. Welcome, family, to another edition of Stranger Thinking Media. This is Yesha Yahoo, where we bring you the gospel of Yahusha HaMashiach to address the problems of a modern world. So stay tuned. Would you like to know what the Matrix is? I can only offer you the truth. The seeds of trauma are planted by the enemy. And we have many enemies. Topics covered. Totally busted. The abandonment abyss. The ultimate weapon. Lost in the trauma maze. Out of control. Unwelcome roommates. I wonder who that could be. Brain on lockdown. Problem solved not so fast. Living on red alert. Numbing the pain. Always on guard. Short fuse. Big problems. Healing from trauma and the grand finale. I know that's a mouthful there.
and we got a lot to talk about. Welcome to our channel. Please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Most of all, enjoy the show. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Very important. Very important statement. It gets to the crux of the matter. Yes, Neo, would you like to know what the Matrix is? But I can only offer you the truth. So here we go. Okay, today we're going to look at the topic of trauma. And trauma is a vehicle. It's like a something that breaks down walls. It causes paradigm shifts in your mental state and your spiritual emotions. And there are people who are expert at this, what I call psychopathy. Edward Bernays was a master of this. He was part of the, uh, the old fascist Nazi party in, in Germany. And uh, his methods were so unique and yet so effective that after the war, the Allies wanted to know more about this. So it became a thing. You could say Edward Bernays perfected the modern-day commercial, right? How to get into people's heads, into their headspace, without letting them know you're actually in their headspace causing paradigm shifts in their outlooks. This is a real thing. This is not uh, something I'm just making up for you to, to, you know, ponder. This is what's happening to you. But most people don't realize it because there's nobody putting hands on you, right? There's nobody putting chains on you, not physically. And because we're basically visual, you know, creatures, we don't see it. Therefore, in our minds, it's not there. You're much like the spiritual world, right? It's not there, right? There's nobody outside of this, what I can see, affecting what I do. But exactly the opposite is, is occurring. These men saw that you could control a populace without putting chains on them, without whipping them with an actual whip. You can whip them in other ways. I mean, the principle still say, stays the same. It remains, but... They don't know it. They don't realize it's happening to them. And if you don't realize what's happening to you, you're powerless against it. And there are forces at work behind the scenes. Yes, there are human beings that are masters of the psychology. I call it psychopathy, right? But what's motivating them? Are they being moved by an unseen hand? Everything you see around you is being manipulated. And until you come to that conclusion, you're helpless, completely helpless. So we're going to dive into how trauma, how trauma is used to break down your walls. And then new walls are constructed. And, and let's look at how it's done and what the outcomes are. And the outcome may surprise you. I can only give you the truth. You can only lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Welcome to our channel. Today, we're diving deep into how trauma is used by unseen forces to manipulate humanity. We're going to break it all down, how these traumas get inside your head and screw with your ability to trust, to love, to just be yourself. All right, so first up, trust. Trauma obliterates your ability to trust. If you've been betrayed or abused, how are you supposed to trust people after that? Your brain's trying to protect you, right? So you push people away, build walls, and isolate yourself. And then there's the fear of abandonment. Trauma wires you to expect the worst from people. You're always waiting for someone to leave you high and dry. You become hypersensitive to any sign of rejection. It's exhausting and can sabotage your relationships before they even start. Now this next one is insidious. Shame. Trauma can bury deep shame inside you, making you feel fundamentally flawed, 
That voice in your head can be so loud that you start to believe it. Chapter 4. Identity Lost in the Trauma Maze Trauma can mess with your sense of self. You might feel lost, disconnected like you don't even recognize yourself anymore. You're just floating through life, trying to piece yourself back together. Chapter 5. Emotions Out of Control Trauma can hijack your emotional control panel. You might have intense emotional outbursts or shut down completely. Either way, it's a struggle to find that balance. It's like all your dials and knobs are cranked up to 11. Chapter 6. Anxiety and Depression. Unwelcome Roommates. Trauma can really screw with your mental health. It leaves scars that aren't visible but are deeply felt. These scars manifest as anxiety and depression. Two unwelcome roommates that take up residence in your mind. Anxiety and depression become your constant companions. They follow you everywhere, making even the simplest tasks feel insurmountable. You're anxious all the time, worried about things that haven't even happened yet. Your mind races with what-ifs and worst-case scenarios robbing you of peace, and the depression weighs you down, like a heavy cloak of sadness. It saps your energy, making it hard to get out of bed, to find joy in things you once loved. It feels like you're trapped in a never-ending cycle of despair. Chapter 7. Learning Brain on Lockdown In this chapter, we delve into the profound effects of trauma on the brain's ability to function especially in learning environments. Trauma impacts your ability to learn and concentrate. When you've experienced trauma, your brain is constantly in a heightened state of alertness, making it difficult to focus on tasks at hand. Your brain's stuck in survival mode, always on the lookout for danger. This constant vigilance drains your mental resources, leaving little room for learning and retaining new information. You're trying to learn something new, but it's like your brain's just not absorbing it. The stress and anxiety create a mental block, making it feel impossible to process and remember new information. It's frustrating and makes it hard to function in everyday life. This struggle can lead to feelings of defeat and hopelessness, further exacerbating the cycle of stress and impaired learning. Understanding this connection is the first step towards finding effective strategies to cope and improve. Chapter 8. Problem Solved Not So Fast Trauma can turn you into a world-class overthinker. You get stuck in loops of worry and doubt making it hard to think clearly and make rational decisions. Chapter 9. Stress. Living on Red Alert. Trauma can put your body into a perpetual state of stress. Your fight-or-flight response is stuck in the on position. Your heart's racing, you're tense all the time, you can't sleep. It's exhausting and takes a toll on your health. Chapter 10. Addiction, Numbing, The Pain. When you're hurting, you'll do anything to make the pain stop drugs, alcohol, anything to numb the pain, to escape from the memories, but addiction doesn't solve the problem, it just creates a whole new set of problems. Chapter 11. Hypervigilance, always on guard. Ever feel like you're constantly looking over your shoulder? That's hypervigilance. Your senses are on overdrive, always scanning for danger. Chapter 12. Impulse control, short fuse, big problems. Trauma can mess with your impulse control. You might engage in risky behaviors or make impulsive decisions. Sometimes those reactions can have serious consequences. Outro Healing from Trauma Thank you for watching. Healing from trauma is a journey, and it starts with acknowledging the pain. It's okay to feel vulnerable and to seek help. Remember, you are not alone in this. Many have walked this path and found light at the end of the tunnel. Remember, understanding these issues is the first step towards healing. Educate yourself, reach out to others, and don't hesitate to ask for support. Healing is a process, and every small step counts. Whether it's through therapy, self-help books, or support groups, each effort brings you closer to recovery. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more insightful content. Stay connected with us for more tips and stories that can inspire and guide you on your healing journey. Your engagement helps us create more valuable content for everyone. This stuff is heavy, but just by watching this video, you're taking a step in the right direction. There's hope. There's healing. You got this. Remember every sunrise brings a new beginning. Embrace the support around you, take deep breaths, and believe in your strength. Together we can overcome. He is the one. So let's get down to it. So what are these videos about? I'll tell you. Let's take a look at it. And uh, we're going to look at it from a global scale. According to polls, the most pressing problem for people all over the world today are inflation, cost of living, unemployment, conflicts, wars, cybersecurity threats.
infectious diseases, healthcare access, misinformation, and corruption. Well, uh, that's what they're telling us. But I mean, yeah, I mean, to a degree, you know, some of that. But uh, I don't know. Is that the truth, or is that uh, you know somebody just uh, creating random polls and talking about what they want to talk about? You know. Well, what's the real issue? What are we really facing today? What's the, what are the things that are affecting you from a day-to-day? Sure, the economy is, but it's deeper than money. And I don't care how much money you have. You know what they say? Uh, money just makes you more of what you already are. So shouldn't you fix what you are rather than worry about getting more money? I mean, let's think it through. If money just makes you more of what you already are, what if you're already messed up? Now you're just more messed up, right? And there's a truism there. And, uh, you know, we won't take time out in this video to look at it, but maybe in another video we'll, we'll track some of that. But yes, it's not about economics, really. It's on another plane. It's a spiritual thing. So we can all sit back and say, hey, if I just had more money or whatever, I'd, I'd be in a better situation. Well, not necessarily. So what, what, are, what are we doing about it? Political parties and politicians, including independent candidates, are running on addressing and solving these issues. They often offer explanations for the most pressing problems. Name the culprits, usually politicians of opposing parties, corporate interests, or foreign adversaries. Yeah, the, all these things are like uh, symptoms, right? It's not the actual disease, though. And they promise to implement policies that will bring change, justice, and betterment. What they don't know is that they are talking about the symptoms of the problem and not the root of it. The greatest frustration comes from trying to solve a problem you have not identified correctly. So you're putting all this time and energy into something. You know, it's like slapping lipstick on a pig, right? (laughs) It's still a pig. I don't care how much makeup you put on it, it's still a pig, right? No, you got to get down to the root problem, the root of the problem. So what is the real problem? Well, we're not going to tackle that in this video, but in the next one, it's kind of sort of a part two to this. We're going to start digging into what is the root cause of the problem. And as you get down to it, like I said, you can, you can give people all the money in the world. You know, you could pay reparations. You know, what is that? Uh, the descendants of former slaves, if you pay them reparations, If they're not right in their spirit, if they're not right in their hearts, they'll probably, (laughs) they'll use that money and probably kill themselves with it. I mean, you you have to be right within yourself so that these blessings can be used in the right way. So it's in the spirit. It's a spiritual thing. And we'll talk more about it. Like I say, not in this video so much, but uh, I got another one on the burner and we're going to start digging a little deeper. So, you know, just uh, stay tuned. Uh, Keep coming back. We got more stuff for you. And all to edify you. I'm not here to trigger you. I'm here to edify you. I'm looking out for you because you were created for a reason. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Just remember, when you look into the abyss, the abyss starts looking back at you. And then you'll start to see. But then they see you. That's what that means. So we're going to end it on that note uh, pretty much. And uh, stay tuned. Um, You know, we're going to bring out a lot more. And uh, hopefully you will all this uh, gets absorbed and you're edified by it. But uh, I just want you to know I love you all so much. Thank you for tuning into my channel. I very much appreciate you all. And shout out to the channel members. 
And may everybody have a beautiful and blessed day who's in the body of Messiah, Yahusha HaMashiach. And I'll see you on the next video. Shalom. <laughs>